With that being said, I would like to ask everybody to stand up as Mamalin leads us in the opening prayer to be followed by the singing of the national anthem for which we will remain standing. Let us bow our heads and let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the gift of light ng bawat isa sa amin ay may kalakasan and that we could join each other on this day as we have our parent-teacher conference. May you bless each one of us, our dear parents, students, teachers, staff, and the management of Calvary Christian School. Grant us wisdom and let there be understanding and a productive meeting of minds in each topic that will be discussed today. We offer everything to you, Lord. All these things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Ayang magiging kailas ng sigahanan, alam ng puso sa titik mo'y buhay. Upang hinihang tuyan ka ng magiging sa manlulupin, di ka pasisigil sa nagatang tutok sa Thank you, Mamalin. Now to welcome you with his opening remarks, I would like to introduce Pastor Nelson Praxidio Jr. He is the President and Guidance Counselor of Calvary Christian School of Pasig, the Senior Pastor of Calvary Christian Fellowship Philippines, and now also a minister to the police force in our great city of Pasig. He is a man of many skills and talents who always offers his best for the kingdom of God. Please welcome Pastor Nelson Praxidio Jr. A blessed day po sa bawat isa at uh, welcome po sa ating last PTC. Uh, this will be our last stretch ng ating uh, school year at uh, 
Papasalamat po kami sa inyong lahat, sa mga magulang, sa mga estudyante na nagtsaga na bagamat alam ko hindi madali ang ating naging uh, school year eh, pero nandiyan po kayo at talagang nakaalalay sa ating mga estudyante. So welcome at uh, ngayon pa lang ay congratulate all the students uh, maging ang mga magulang uh, at lalo na sa ating po mga, mga staff, sa ating mga teachers sa talagang uh, 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 dedicated na magturo ano bagamat ay ang mga bagay na to ay uh, bago rin sa bawat isa so in behalf of Pastor David ay lubos po siya nagpapasalamat din sa bawat isa inyo at uh, at uh, na, uh, nawa nga sana sila ay makapunta muli dito sa Pilipinas uh, later on so sud na school year ay may panibago pong mga pagbabago pa rin ang DepEd uh, mamaya po i-discuss ng ating beloved principal yung ating tinatawag na hybrid and hyplex uh, modality sa ating pong, uh, pag-aaral. But anyway, maraming maraming salamat muli at nawa ay magpatuloy po tayo, patuloy tayong magtsaga sa ating mga pag-aaral at alam natin ito yung malalagpasan din natin ang mga bagay na ito, subalit alam ko eh, ito po ay para sa mabuti ng bawat isa. So in behalf of Calvary uh, Christian School and rest of the staff, ay saludo po kami sa inyo and maraming maraming pong salamat. God bless! Thank you so much, Pastor Nelson. All right. Now, without further ado, I shall introduce our host for today. She is an accomplished educator and businesswoman as she graduated with a bachelor's degree in accountancy from Polytechnic University of the Philippines, has a master's degree in education from the University of the Philippines, is a certified licensed teacher and board exam passer, who possesses a doctorate degree in Christian education from Theology University, where she was also awarded Best in Thesis and the Meritissimus Award. And she has completed ministerial training in Zion Ministry Institute in New York, USA. Today, she is the Academic Dean of Messiah College Foundation Incorporated, and she also teaches as an accounting professor there. You know her as our beloved principal of Calvary Christian School of Plastics. Please welcome Dr. Elaine Prexidio. Okay, thank you, Paula, for that wonderful introduction. Isang napakagandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. I am so happy to see all of you, parents and guardians. Two months na lang at malapit na ang ating moving up and graduation ceremony. I hope you will stay tuned with us until the end of this meeting because we will be discussing to you very important matters for the fourth quarter and for the next school year. Okay, ito po yung ating mga agenda for today. We will show you the highlights of the third quarter. We will be awarding the Math Quiz B winners, the Academics Excellent Students, and the Top Creeper Students. I will also discuss with you the upcoming events for the fourth quarter, and of course, our closing ceremonies. Our last agenda is the discussion of the new modalities, which are limited face-to-face -face modalities as prescribed by the Department of Education for the school year 2022 to 2023. Napakahalaga po na marinig nyo po ito. At the end of the session, we will also have our Q&A portion. I would recommend that you have a piece of paper and a pen so you may write down any questions that may pop in your mind as we go through today's program. Alternatively, you may write down your questions in the Zoom chat box. Okay, let us get the ball rolling. I am proud to present to you first the highlights of the of the activities of our students for the third quarter. Please watch this video.
Okay, what a wonderful video of the highlights of our Math Week program. I am sure our students were able to realize how important mathematics is in our daily lives. Now, may I ask Mom Becca to formally announce the winners of the Math Quiz B competition. Okay, Mom Becca. Friends, students, and of course, to our teachers and staff, I am honored to present to you the Math Week Quiz B winners, school year 2021-2022. Beginning with the grade one, third place, Devera Samantha H. Second place, Abraham Lucas Franco G. And the first place, Gamez Kent Robic B. For grade two class, Third place, Edio Audrey May S. Second place, Francisco Amriel Lavin R. First place, Francisco Lance Allen Gray. For the grade three level, third place, Sandatan Mary Mathea M. Second place, Perez Frances Clarita M. And the first place, Resido Jewel Lohan S. For grade 4 class, third place, we have Rosal Zeus Maximus H. Second place, Samson Michael Christopher C. And the first place, we have De Castro Lady Kizer D. For grade 5 level, third place, Dries Zoe D. Second place, De La Cruz Princess Esther N. And the first place, Cobilias Ryan Javin DC. For grade six level, third place goes to Santiago Khalil Christoph T. Second place, Subiera Darla Sabrina S. And the first place, we have Reyes Nathaniel Jake M. Moving on to the high school level, grade seven, third place, Lakson Laken Rael. Second place, Liasos Ethan Wayne. And the first place, we have Leona Abigail Caris. For grade eight level, Third place, we have Chu Sophia, Sophia Margaret S. and Espolong Rafael Luis D. Second place, Driz Zai D. And the first place, Regino Amanda Bryce F. For grade nine level, third place, we have Tagalog Lovian Sire B. Second place, Santos Janela Chloe B. And the first place, we have Elihai Krilsen Eon Khalil G. Moving on to the grade 10 level. Third place, we have Reyes Marie Nicolette M. Second place, Castro John Paul Mabinson L. And the first place, Batin Ashley J. Congratulations Paul, to all the students who won the Mathematics Quiz B. Thank you and God bless. Okay, thank you so much, Mom Becca. And congratulations to our Math Quiz B winners. And now let's go on to the awarding of the top Creeper students. May I ask Ms. Paula Praxidio to announce the top Creeper students? Yes, Dr. Elaine. The criteria for this top Creeper student ranking is based on the amount of subjects or topics a student has accomplished and his or her first time score in the online evaluation. These students have shown mastery and diligence in their Creeper assignments. All right. First, we have for grade four, De Leon Simone Miel for top three. In top two is Chico Elise 
Irene. Elio and Irene for top two. And top one is De Leon Simon Mateo. For grade five, we have Kubilias Ryan Javin for top three, Casimira Mary Caitlin for top two, and Regina Noel Rafael for top one. Next, for grade six, we have Kalua Catherine for top three. For top two, we have Reyes Nathaniel Jake. For, and for top one, we have Subiera Darla Sabrina. For grade seven, we have in top three, Sacking Angeli Brooke. For top two, we have Tan Ethan Justin. And for top one, we have Nicholas Zachary Nathan. For grade eight, in top three, we have two, Sophia Margaret. In top two, Regina Amanda Bryce. And for top one, we have Gamez Madeleine. Now for grade nine, we have in top three, Claudette Tan. In top two, we have Santos, Julia, Claudine. And in top one, we have Elihai, Creelsin, Ion, Khalil. For grade 10, we have in top three, Reyes, Marie Nicolette. In top two, we have Palacio, Christian, uh, Christian Danielle. And in top one, we have Batin Ashley. Congratulations to each and every one of you. We're so proud. Okay, thank you very much, Paula, for announcing the top Kuiper students. And now the most awaited awards, the presentation of the Academic Excellence Award with honors and highest honors of the third quarter. To present the award, may I call on our CCS teachers, teachers Rana, teacher Colleen, and teacher Marianne. Good morning, dear parents, guardians, and students. I am honored to present to you the Academic Excellence Awardees from the Kinder to Grade 3 class. Let's begin with the Kinder class. Academic Excellence with High Honors in Alphabetical Order. Fernando Ivan Theodore S. Sandatan Shan Mateo Matthew M. And Academic Excellence with Honors in Alphabetical Order. Asper Skyler Gadrick F, Bernal Asher Jacob B, Betancol Emmanuel Sky T, De La Berges, Lucas Gabriel A, Dimson Matil Matilda Johan P, Masangkai Zane Andre S. And for the grade one class, Academic Excellence with High Honors in Alphabetical Order, De Vera Samantha H, Gamez Kent Rovic D. And for the Academic Excellence with Honors in Alphabetical Order, we have Abraham Lucas Franco G, Bautista Kayomi Gail T, Revidad Chris Alexei A, and Saking Amari Gabriel M. And for the grade two class, we have for the academic excellence with high honors in alphabetical order, we have Francisco Lance Allen Gray and Ramos Rain Elise V. And for the academic excellence with honors in alphabetical order, we have Anglo Michael Angelo Red E, Cobilias Rian Jam May D, De La Berges Ehara Kisha A, Espolong Gabriel Denise D, Francisco Amriel Lavin R, Galmes, Galvez Ron Gabriel B, Idro Audrey May S, Libonao Joaquin Isabel C, Medina Arwen Rose C, Mora Enrico Rafael P, Keroda Cloud Gavin D, and Rojas Apollo D. And for the grade three class, we have the academic excellence with high honors in alphabetical order. We have Magalona Jaden Mariano G, Resido Jewel Lohan S, Sandatan Maria Mary Mathea M. 
For academic excellence with honors in alphabetical order, we have Aguila Ashton Michael R, Aureliano Aiden Felix R, Balmedilia Micaela Joanna K, De Leon Marie Francois M, Demon Amisha Sofiel Anayel T, Escondo Chiron Tracy, Gabales Jonas Martil L, Itoralde Benjamin L, Leona Aaron Christopher T, Manalastas Alec Brendan T, Maranyan Calix Roy A, and Jar Pamin Jared Adam B, Panganiban Jorel Simon M, Paral Ann Margaret R, Perez Frances Clarita M, Ramos Rafa Elisha V, Reyes Senda Sendaya Denise E, Rosetta Elisha Haley J, Santiago Maria Helen Isabel B, and C. Kitsune. Congratulations, primary students. To present to you the Academic Excellence Awardees of Intermediate, may I call on Teacher Colin Chi. Good morning, dear parents and students. I'm here to present the Academic Excellence Awardees. Let's start with the grade four class. For academic excellence with high honors in alphabetical order, we have De Castro Leye Kayser D, De Leon Mat Simon Mateo D, Samson Michael Christopher C. For academic excellence with honors in alphabetical orders, we have Arcelia Karstin Lores R, Bautista Pabelli Kaysley T, De Leon Simon Miel D, Domingo Shimaya Jadiel E, Makalindol Raisa Joan C, Palacio Joaquin Luis G, Perez Roman Castiel M, and Rosal Zeus Maximus H. Let's proceed with the grade five class. For academic excellence with high honors in alphabetical order, we have Kubilias Ryan J. Ven DC, for academic excellence with honors in alphabetical order, we have Casimiro Mary Caitlin V, Driz Zoe D, Nicolas Kian Isaiah R, Padrigo Kyra Jenica L, Regino Noel Rafael F, and Surla Maria Natasha P. Let's move on to the grade six class. For academic excellence with high honors in alphabetical orders, we have Aquilador Nobile Jasmine C, Reyes Nathaniel Jake N, Subiera Darla Sabrina S. For academic excellence with honors in alphabetical order, we have Bautista Robbie Angelic Jamila C, Kaluwag Catherine May T, De Castro Arihana G B, De Leon Marcos Bryce M, Elihai Chiana Akinji, Fajardo Veronique Bella P, Maranyon Samuel Chael A, Patron KCB, Santiago Khalil Christoph T, and Dan Josie Catherine M. Congratulations, intermediate students. Keep up the good work. For the high school department, may I call on teacher Mary Ann to announce the Academic Excellence Awardees. Um, good morning, dear parents. I am pleased to announce the Academic Excellence Awardees for the third quarter from the high school department. Let's start from the grade seven class. Academic Excellence with high honors, Leona Abigail Caristi. Academic Excellence with honors in alphabetical order, Angeles Mika Angela G. Nicolas Sakari Nathan R. Saking Anjali Brooke M. And Tan Ethan Justin. Now let's proceed from the grade eight class. Academic excellence with high honors in alphabetical order. Bikomong Josiah Caleb A. Dries Sai D. Games Madeleine D. Maranyon Cyrus Lan A. Regino Amanda Bryce F and Chu Sophia Margaret S. Now, academic excellence with honors in alphabetical order. Bansuela Elijah Gabriel S. Asuncion April Joy O. 
Kaluwag Charlies Nicole T. De Castro Hadi Kristen M. Galapon Marishka Tatiana C. Gatbonton Maria Teresita C. Ochoa Giselle Elise V. And Perez Bernadette Elise M. Now let's proceed from the, from the, from the grade 9 class. So academic excellence with high honors in alphabetical order. Elihai Krilsin Ion Kalil G. Garcia Beatriz S. Santos Julia Claudine B. Tan Claudette S. And Tia Yeshua Denise C. Academic excellence with honors in alphabetical order. Ann Anakin Henrik M. Arcilia Clyde Lawrence R. Kaaya Maria Valerie B. De Castro Adrian Gianna B. Inlayo Jan Daniel B. Santos Janela Chloe B. And Tagalog Lobian Sire B. Okay, so last but not the least from the grade 10 class. So academic excellence with high honors in alphabetical order. Batin Ashley J. Benosa Austin Luke A. Castro John Paul Mabinson L. Palacio Christine Daniel G. And Reyes Marie Nicolette M. Academic excellence with honors in alphabetical order. De Leon Max Ellison A. Labrador Alia Faith S. Pamin Jehan Paul B. And Perez Francesca Sofia E. So congratulations, high school students. Now to announce the schedule of consultation, may I call on Dr. Elaine Praxidio. Thank you very much, Bo. Okay, thank you uh, very much, Teacher Mary Ann and all the teachers that were able to announce uh, the you know, academic awardees. And congratulations to the students. Keep up the good work. I am sure you parents and guardians are all eager to see the grades of our students. Congratulations nga pala sa mga uh, parents din ng academic awardees. Um, and I know that you wanted to know how they manage this, the students' progress for this quarter. There will be a scheduled consultation made by the students' uh, advisors for parents. Now, here is a sample of the schedule of your consultation with our teachers. The schedules will be posted in our grade level chat groups and in our FB page. So, uh, tingnan nyo na lang po um, when we post it. Okay, so again, uh, patalastas po muna tayo. I would like to show you some of our Calvary products for sale. Okay lang ba? Ah, okay. Before this patalastas, we'll have our picture taking muna bago baka umalis na yung iba. But uh, sige, let's please open your cameras and let's have our picture taken. Okay, are you ready? Ayan. Sige po, pabukas, pabukas na lang po. Okay. Okay, for I think marami po tayo today. We are more than 100 uh, in our Zoom, um, you know, Meeting. Zoom at attendance. Okay, ready? Uh, yung iba hindi pa nakabukas. Pabukas lang po. Okay, ready? For our first, first page, one, two, three, smile. Yon. Second page. Okay, one, two, three, smile. Yan, and on our third page, pakibuksan lang po, parang maraming hindi nakabukas ang kanilang mga cameras. Okay, one, two, three, smile. And for the last page, tama ba? Last page na? Okay, one, two, three, smile. Yeah. Okay, hinga lang po tayo ng malalim. Patalastas lang po muna. I would like to show you some of our Calvary products for sale. 
we still have we still make our very own peanut butter and chili sauce na napakasarap napakaanghang okay and then we have on our next slide okay sa ating uh, rose of sharon uh, ma'am joy can you please Okay, kung gusto nyo pong magpalamig dahil summer na po ngayon, you may come to our very own Rose of Sharon Resort for a refreshing swim. We also accommodate weddings, baptisms, birthdays, retreats, and family gatherings. It is a private place wherein you can enjoy the good time of your fellowship with your family and friends. Very affordable lang po ang ating mga prices. Sa mga gusto naman pong magpaganda at magpalakas, you can buy our iFern products. We carry Fern Active, Fern D, and Calcium Supplements. We also have Silver Fresh, Toothpaste, Beauty Soaps, and other beauty products. Okay, sa mga sumasakit naman ang mga kasukasuan at gusto makatipid sa massage, you can buy this Super Moringa Gel with Luyang Dilaw and Aromatherapy Oil. We also have organic coffee with Malunggay. Ang sabi nila, ang kaping ito ay hindi maasing satyan. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Eco Green Products. They are organic disinfected solutions. Hindi po harmful sa ating environment. We have detergent soap, air freshener, microbuster, or organic equivalent of chlorine. And the, the clouds disinfectant creates dry mist. We are using this at the front gate pag pumasok po kayo for disinfection of the people coming or entering our school. And then our very own Calvary Farm in Nagkarlan, Laguna produces eggs. Pineapples, taba, lakatan, datundan, name it, and we have it. And also, we have an abundance of red baby papaya. Matamis daw po. Actually, uh, super tamis. And our next harvest will be rambutan and tamote. Now you can see, no, yung ating farm. We have more than 300 papaya trees there. Okay, so get ready now. Let's go back to the main topic. Oh, again, I think we have the affordable health insurance. So if you want to join in this HMO, um, ano po, yung mga pre-existing illness ay mawe-wave na po uh, in the first year na kayo po ay uh, magjo-join dito sa ating HMO. Okay, now let's go back to our main topic for our upcoming events. But I just wanted to remind you, if you have questions, please um, be able to write it down in our chat box, as well as if you have a pen and a paper, you can write it down um, as soon as you have a question, because we have a very important, um, um, you know, less, not lesson, uh, important message for all of you for the coming school year. Okay, by the way, our recognition and our graduation day. Okay, this will be um, our graduation day for our kinder grade 6 and grade 10 students will be on the 24th of June. Yeah. Okay, next. Next, please. Oh, yung ating uh, recognition, naka, ano na ba? our recognition day will be on June 23. Okay, our recognition fee, if you can uh, turn on, I'm um, Joy. Um, our recognition fee is 1,500 and our graduation fee is uh, 2,000. This includes the souvenir photos, memorabilia, uh, we also have our togas here for graduating students. Okay, next. Next, please. In order to graduate, uh, this is a very, very important announcement for all of you. Uh, okay, a gentle reminder lang po that, um, you know, that, you know, you will, 
be considered ano yung nakalagay dito considered not officially enrolled or temporarily enrolled unless you are able to set uh be able to to pay the fees and uh there are forms filled out and also the birth certificate and um, very important is the credentials from other schools. If you are a transferee, uh, please um, ask the school to send us the credentials because uh, you will not be um, included in our, our moving up ceremony. If our, your school or if you did not um, send us the credentials from other schools. Um, I'm sure uh, you can talk to the admin department so um, para malaman ninyo kung if you will graduate or if you will move up yung ating mga students into the next um, grade level. Okay, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to write to us using the chat box. Sulat lang po para hindi niyo makalimutan. You may write down any questions you might have uh, for me later with a pen and paper so you don't forget. Now, let's move on to the most important part of our meeting today. Ito na po. Okay, this is a discussion on our new modalities for the coming school year 2022 to 2023. My discussion is based on the department uh, DepEd order number 030 series 2022 released no? uh, last April 6, 2022. So, mainit-init pa itong uh, uh, issue na to. This is the latest from the DepEd. Okay, next. Okay, I'm sure you all still remember yung ating uh, consultation last Parents Connect or PTC. We consulted you on what modality ang gusto ninyo. It's either the pure online or face-to-face. -face. The result was about 38% for online, 38% uh, gusto nang mag-face-to-face, and 24% sa hindi pa alam, hindi pa... Uh, decided. So we have to, uh, took note of this. Okay, but you know, we have seen with our students na talagang majority of our students are really bored na sa kanilang mga bahay. Imagine more than two years na halos nakakulong na sa bahay yung ating mga anak. They need social interaction. Okay, the Department of Education came up with the new modalities. Ito po yung gusto kong i-discuss sa inyo, which I will be, um, ayan, gusto ko lang i-impart sa inyo kung ano ba itong hybrid and high flex modality. Okay, to tell you the truth, I have been attending a lot of seminars regarding the implementation of this new modality and how it will be effective for our students. Now, I would like to show you the context of adopting the new learning modalities. First is, yan, nakasulat po sa ating uh, PowerPoint, the gradual trans, uh, transitioning from full-time remote learning back into the classroom limited in-person instruction. Okay, do not react first. Uh, I know some of you do not like uh, the students or yung inyong mga anak to come here in school. But let me uh, slowly um, give you some insight. Okay, please take note. Hindi po tayo 100% ng ating mga students ang papasok sa school and sabay-sabay. Kailangan daw ng limited face-to-face uh, -face based on the school classroom capacity. Now, second, in school, we still must continue physical distancing requirements and other health safeguards. And lastly, we must address the threat of resurgence. Kung sakaling bigla ang mag-lockdown na naman, ano ang gagawin natin kung yung iba nating mga students are nasa uh, school limited face-to-face -face po tayo? 
the surgeons require system to be ready to switch between the in-person and remote learning continuity. Our goal is that resilient education learning continuity program will be a set. Okay, to give a clear view, let me dif differentiate hybrid blended learning and hybrid flexible or high flex learning. You can actually read the de definitions on the screen right now. For hybrid learning, classes replace a portion of traditional face-to-face -face instruction with online activities such as uh, video lectures, online discussions, or projects. Online instructions can be synchronous or asynchronous. That is what we're doing right now. So blended naman, blended learning combines in-person classes and interaction with supplemental online educational elements. Online learning materials aren't intended to replace face-to-face -face class time, online hybrid courses, but instead materials are designed to, to build upon what was covered in the class. Ito yung dati po na nire-require ng DepEd pero hindi naman po natuloy. Okay, ito naman po yung pinakabago. While the high flex or hybrid flexible, so high flex, hybrid high flex ang tawag dito, uh, courses integrate face-to-face -face with an online learning experience. High flex courses differ from hybrid and blended learning. Students are actually given the choice to attend classes in person or via video conferencing. Um, software such as Zoom, uh, students can switch back and forth throughout the semester or throughout the school year. Okay, so sa totoo lang po, mahirap at magastos ang ganitong modality, ito pong hybrid high flex. Let me show you how we are coping with it right now. Ito po yung mga steps na ginagawa natin, na ginagawa ng school um, in order to, um, you know, disseminate information, information. Okay, step one, ito po yung ginagawa natin. That's why we have our parents connect. And we want to um, give you the knowledge of hybrid, high flex uh, learning modality. Step one, we understand and envision. At this point, as a school principal, together with our IT team and teachers, we are trying to understand kung ano nga ba ang hybrid high flex learning modalities. Okay, ang una, we are now identifying the needs of the students through consultation. The teacher's capacity, kaya ba ng ating mga teachers, the physical and technological space, are we able to fit in the students as per depth ed regulation? and the bandwidth requirements. Okay, so dito naman po sa so step two, design or decide and design. Determine if the new modality is for all or only for a few students. We will be able to determine the grade levels, design a vulnerable groups of students, and decide to roll out the program. And then step three, we will be able or enable and execute. Ito na po yung execution. So actually right now we are on step one pa lang. Okay, the questions are, are we able to uh, operationalize the new modality? What subjects are we going to prioritize? Okay, what learning activities will be carried out in person? and organize the shift system among the students. And of course, the allocation of the teachers is very important. And class capacity gaps found in the remote and in-person learning. Okay, let's go on. Okay, there are four phases no, that we need to adopt. So ito po, napakarami po nating pinag-aaralan as a school. Okay, we have the learning and assessment design. 
Okay, and then the next one, we have teacher readiness and professional development. All of our teachers will have a um, seminar. I think some of them are already um, going through some um, seminars. Na po sila ng mga seminars. And then this is very important, then safety, support system, and equity. Ang equity po, kasi some of you, some of the students will be... Um, online and some are face to face so dapat equal po ang bawat isa and then we have the space infrastructure and the toolkits that we need okay here are the four successful indicators pag implement na po natin yon we as a school must identify itong mga success indicators na kailangan natin first is the content Ano ba ang hybrid, high flex? Ano po ang ilalagay natin sa ating mga curriculum so that it will be effective and it will be successful. And then second is the well-being of our students. Okay, so we need uh, to know, um, kasi marami po ngayon ang nagkakaroon ng anxiety, yung ating mga students, uh, especially the young men, no? yung ating mga high school students, they need talaga to go out so uh, we will see and uh, be able you know, to identify the well-being of our students and then the quality of our education, um, the, even um, the students learning then. And lastly, kailangan po tayong sumunod sa mga protocols, the safety and equity of um, the learning continuity or the hybrid high flex learning program. Okay, here is a sample of the high flex, hybrid high flex classroom. Okay, limited face-to-face -face students in the classroom. If you can see, um, students are in the classroom, yan po, and uh, some of the students are outside or in the comfort of their own homes or kung nasaan man sila. Okay, the teacher there is teaching and she's showing a PowerPoint presentation of the lesson seen by both students. Okay, so a lesson is shown in the projector and uh, there should be a microphone attached, you know, to uh, the teacher and, you know, just like actually what we're doing right now. Okay, now... For the big question, dahil po sa kailangan natin ng mga gadgets and all the things, you know, to prepare for the coming high flex hybrid uh, learning continuity or learning modality, uh, are we going to increase? I think this is would be one of your questions. mag increase po ba tayo ng tuition fee for the coming school year? The answer is... Yes, po. Okay. So, um, I know we don't want to increase the tuition fee, but last school year in 2021 to 2022, napakababa po ng ating uh, tuition fee last school year comparing to the uh, tuition fee before the pandemic last 2019 to 2020. So, what are the reasons for this? School needs to improve the infrastructure of the school. This uh, includes also the internet bandwidth, the additional monitors, cameras to install, additional projectors, and other toolkits and gadgets. Secondly, we need uh, to... Um, we have to increase our utility costs, our electricity, water telephone then and the next one is the additional manpower we need more technical team and um, some technical or teachers development uh, seminars that our teachers will attend to okay let me show you the tuition fee konti lang naman ang increase uh, this is the 2021 to 2022 this is the tuition fee that we are paying so for the kinder up to grade three, we have a total of 
uh, 27,000, uh, grade four to grade six, 28,000. And for the high school department, we are charging 29,000 pesos. Okay, now for the school year 2022 to 2023. So uh, we have a total for kinder to grade three of 30,000 pesos and for grade four to grade six, 31,000 and grade seven to grade 10, 32,000. Maliit lang naman po ang idinagdag natin. We actually have added this to, um, I think 1,000 for the tuition fee. The tuition fee that you are paying goes to the uh, sueldo, salaries of the teachers. And the miscellaneous fees, I think we have added 2,000 pesos. Ito po yung breakdown. Okay, let's go to the next. Um, yan. Okay, for the breakdown of 5,000 pesos, we need to have an addition, uh, a charge of electricity of 1,000 pesos, which is 100 per month for 10 months. No? And then water is 220 pesos per month per student. And then we have the I. ATF, new uh, disinfecting, um, required disinfecting supplies, 1,500. Ano po ba ito? Later, I will discuss it with you. And then internet connection of 500 pesos. Uh, our internet connections, we have three internet connections. We have on the first floor, we have the globe, which we pay about 3,600 uh, per month. Then on the second floor, we have um, PLDT, um, Fiverr, 2,500 per month. And on the third floor, we have 2,500 as well, PLDT. So more or less, we are paying right now 8,000 pesos. Pero I think we need to increase our bandwidth, our internet connection to a better one. Okay, next we have medical consultation and insurance. Again, um, last time we don't have uh, medical consultants, but right now, we will have a daily medical consultants here. We have a pediatrician and a nurse before, but now we will call them and uh, service dito po sa ating school. And then we have the high flex tools and gadgets, which I have discussed to you earlier that um, you know we need more projectors, we need more uh, TV monitors um, and other gadget, microphones, um, to be able to um, have a successful na limited face-to-face. -face. Okay, now here are the IATF required disinfecting supplies. Okay, we have the hand soap. Kailangan po daw maglagay sa lahat ng mga CR. And then we have hand sanitizer that uh, we need to put in as you enter and even in the classrooms. We will provide for that. And then we have the fogging uh, solution on the first floor. Okay, we will have alcohol or right now we are using an organic hand uh, sanitizer. Then we will provide also face mask. No, pagka medyo matagal na po hindi uh, yung ibang mga students worn out na yung face mask. We will have um, naka... Uh, Nasa, you know, sa classrooms, we will provide face masks for the students. And we actually bought an oxygen tank. And also there is a provided wheelchair in our clinic right now. And then we have, we will put humidifier uh, sa bawat classroom. So medyo ano rin po ito, mag then. And of course, we will have PPEs for our um, medical consultants. By the way, our clinic was uh, moved from the second floor to the first floor. Nandun na po yung ating clinic. So we are now renovating our new clinic because ang sabi ng DepEd, kailangan malapit daw po yung ating clinic sa uh, exit uh, in case there will be um, some COVID cases. Now, for our high flex tools and gadgets, nabi ko na kanina, we need more projectors 
dadagdagan na lang po natin yung ating projectors and then we need more cameras uh, to serve um, to be part of the high our high flex um, you know modality then we will add zoom accounts po uh, it will be zoom na po hindi na po yung uh, ating uh, google meet that we are using so we have we will add more of our camera stand. We have cables, extensions, TV monitors, video capture cards, and of course, our domain and our hosting. Okay, so I hope you understand, but if you have any questions, please, please write it down in the chat box. Okay, ito po, uh, makikiusap lang po ako for our honor students um, for the next school year. Our first honor will receive 7,000 pesos um, discount. To, for the second honors, we are giving 5,000 discount and third honors, 3,000 peso discount. Um, because of our financial na pangangailangan, we were really down this um, year. Uh, that's why uh, we are giving this um, you know, subsidy for our honor students. And also, um, we will also give a voucher, voucher, but also referrals. Uh, parents, this is, you know, to have more students in our school and also to help you out. Yung pong may mga referrals, ma mga bagong studyante na papasok po sa ating school, uh, we will give you a voucher. I think it costs 500 pesos per student. So if you know um, 10 no, na marerefer nyo ta sa ating school, you know, we can give you 5,000 pesos. So refer na po kayo. So we need more students to be able to, uh, of course, have, you know, to uh, have more students in our school and also to add on into our financial needs. Okay, so I, as I have told you a while ago that we need IT personnel and new teachers, I wanted to introduce to you two of our teachers. Now we, yan, mukhang talagang ano, ready, ready na sa hybrid high flex. <laughs> so we have... Sir John Angelo Murray, I think they're there. You can see them on the screen as well. And teacher Jovi Ann Valenzuela. <laughs> okay, so they are really vibrant and ready for our new modality for this coming school year. Ayan, nagsa seminar na sila. They are really, um, you know, nag study na sila how they, how the students, how they can service our students. So congratulations. And of course, dun sa ating mga, um, mga per, uh, teachers then, um, they are all um, very eager for this coming school year. Now, for our question and answer portion, marami na bang nag-ask ng questions? Okay, so maybe you can, if there is a question, Maybe you can raise your hand. Uh, pwede po tayo mag-entertain. Uh, pwede ipin po natin si parents. Um, I'm sure you all understand. If not, we will have another session. Camera got lost. So anyway, if there are questions, um, you can ask questions. Paula, are there any questions? Okay. Do you have questions or maybe some of our parents can um, just raise your hand, Paki, uh, unmute lang yung inyong mga microphone so we can um, answer your questions. Okay, Paula, is there a question? And my question here from Subira, uh, Mrs. Subira or Mrs. Subira. Face-to-face uh, -face na po ba ang graduation? Okay, so we will have for grade six students and parents, uh, grade six, grade um, a kinder and grade 10, 
uh, we will have a consultation with you na i-arrange po natin if you want to have a face-to-face. -face. Pero alam ko, gusto ng mga estudyante ng face-to-face. -face. Hmm. Okay, so uh, gusto lang namin malaman sa inyo. No? So by May, uh, maybe second week of May, I, uh, we will have a meeting. Okay. So for the others naman na hindi graduating, we will have a separate meeting as well. Uh, I think baka okay lang sa inyo na hindi face-to-face. -face. Pero if you want, we will hire a big place, you know, for everyone na uh, safe po ang bawat isa. Okay. Okay. Um, next mm. question uh, from Andy C. If a student is attending in person but is feeling sick one day, can they still attend via Zoom so they don't miss out on the day's lesson? Yeah, that's why we have the hybrid high flex. Kasi the student can choose, let's say, na dun la lang siya sa bahay. Di po ba? Or the student can be here in the school. Kaya po, if the student is not feeling well, then dun lang po siya sa house, no? And uh, of course, um, before we have experienced na some of the parents were asking the students to attend face-to-face, -face, no? pero not feeling well, meron na po tayong uh, personnel to really check on the student's uh, condition, health condition, before they enter in the class. Um, so, yun po, that's why it's a hybrid high flex. If the student is not feeling well, then they should not attend uh, the, the school. And please, parents, um, kung pwede lang po na, you know, if you don't want the, uh, na if the student is not feeling well, wag nyo na po silang papasukin. Meron naman po tayong high flex. Uh, it's flexible. Okay, next. All right, next. Uh, from Abigail Celis, mm -hmm. um, are transportation, uh, is the school service transportation still provided ng school? Okay. Um, yes, good morning, Ms. Celis. Um, we will conduct a survey and um, kung, kung ilan po, baka lang, o konti lang po, sayang po yung gasolina. Sobrang mahal po ng gasolina right now. So we will conduct a survey and uh, yun, mas maganda po na kami yung magsa-service or anyone that we know will have a service para makita po namin baka may sakit yung, yung driver, mahawaan yung students. Yes, we will do that. We will have a survey. Okay, soon. Thank you. Okay. Next question from NDC again. How will exams or quizzes be administered for both student groups? Okay, right now we are still studying it, but according to the seminar I attended, um, that all the exams will be online. Pero, um, let's see what happened, but uh, since some of the students are uh, here, of course, we want equity. Ang sabi nga, napaka, na, you know, napaka-importante po na equal lahat yung... Um, treatment natin doon sa mga nagpe-face to face as well as doon sa uh, nag-online. So we will make a you know a very good um, assessment um, criteria or assessment uh, on the on this matter. So yung mga exam magiging equal po lahat. Don't worry. Uh, we are still studying this. We are collaborating this with the DepEd and other um, stakeholders. So, yeah, we want equality. It should be equal to all, no bias. Okay, next question. All right, next question. We have um, Ms. Chris De Castro. Will all the students attending face-to-face -face classes be vaccinated? Well, according to DepEd, we need that. We need a vaccination, uh, that requirement. Uh, pero, again, please, you know, do not quote me. I know that, um, no, bawal pong mag-discriminate ng hindi vaccinated. 
But yun po yung nakalagay sa DepEd <laughs> na students should be vaccinated. But if not, we need a medical certificate no, na hindi po mabavaccinate yung anak niya. All right. Okay. Thank you. Next from Mrs. Christy Inlayo. Um, good day. I just want to announce. I she's she's announcing that um there is a booster shot here, sa oh, okay. Donya Juliana Village in the chapel. So on April twenty two, I believe. Yeah, it's uh, up to two p.m. Okay. Today, ba yon? 22? Yes, yes. Okay, it's so uh, announcement. Thank you, Ma'am Christine Layo, for, for that announcement. So, up to 2 o'clock, mayroong available na booster shot dito po sa Doña Juliana sa chapel. Okay, next. All right. Uh, from Mr. and Mrs. Pamin, good morning po. About mm -hmm. po sa NAT for grade 10, kailan yung schedule and face to face na po ba ang exam? So for the NAT exam, the DepEd hasn't issued any uh, announcement. But as soon as meron na pong announcement, I, uh, we will um, disseminate it to all of you. Uh, what's the next question, Paula? Um, kailan ang? Kailan yung schedule? And face-to-face -face po ba siya? Uh, wala pa pong schedule. So I'm not sure they will. Uh, kasi bising bisut po ang DepEd na pumupunta po sa mga different schools to check if we are ready for the limited face-to-face. -face. Mm. Wag po kayong ma-confuse sa limited face-to-face. -face, no? If you don't want your students to come to school, uh, pero alam ko yung students, kukulitin po kayo niya. <laughs> Papa, gusto nilang pumasok. Yan, yan lang po ang... Uh, kasi kung yung classmates nila ay papasok, ay gusto rin po nila. Pero we will have a limited lang, kaya nga po limited. If there are 20 students uh, in a class, we will only have 10 or 5 here at a time. So magtakaroon po tayo ng relievo ba tawag mm. So, yes. Yeah, Staggered schedule. Yeah. Okay, next. Question. All right. So, from Mrs. Uh, jo Andres. Uh, in the definition of high flex, it is noted there that students are given the choice to attend classes in person. So is the choice really up to the student or parents? Uh, will it not be determined by the school or the teacher? Okay. It is determined by the parents and the students. Mm -hmm. Hindi po namin kayo uh, I I, you know, Pipilitin kung ayaw nyo pong pumasok sa school. Yes. So, uh, it can be high flex. Ang high flex po kasi is flexible. And especially, yun namang pumapasok dito, no? Gustong-gustong pumasok na students. They can, um, you know, pagka nagkaroon ng lockdown, kaya nga po high flex. Uh, sa bahay na lang po muna. Kaya po yun, yun yung ginagawa po natin. I think there's someone that we need to admit. Please admit. Okay. So, uh, Mrs. Trees, um, hindi po namin pipilitin if you don't want, if, you, if the students doesn't want to attend. It's just pag gusto lang nilang umattend, uh, they can come. Uh, kung if they want the the assessment lang yan yung kailangan natin equal po kasi baka sabihin ng ng uh, student dito na ako sa bahay mag-exam so pero mabubuklat niya lahat yung mga books no? so so there should be an equity so pag-iisipan po natin yan yun lang so for the classroom um, face to face uh you Students may not come here, pero kailangan naming malaman kung ilan nang papasok for a day, kasi ayon nating ma overcrowd ang classroom. And actually, pag-usapan din natin later kung gusto niyo ng naka aircon, kasi all of our classrooms are air conditioned. Pero we have to buy a, a humidifier bayon, air a purifier. pure air purifier 
na kailangan nating i-plug in in the classrooms while class is still going on so that the air will be purified. Okay, okay. another question? Yes, so will the high flex modality be implemented next year for all grade levels? Yes, Paul. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, we will implement that for all the grade levels. But there will be, because the DepEd wanted a bigger space for all. So, meron tayong magiging morning class and afternoon class. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that kasi may ano sila, parang one meter or two meters apart. Okay, all right. Next. So from Carlin Arcelia, is a vaccination mandatory for students attending face to face classes? According to DepEd. <laughs> Yes, it's so hard, no? Baka makuta ko, pero uh, I don't want to discriminate the, the students or anyone, but it is a requirement. Yeah. Uh, another kind of repeated question. Magiging available din po ba school service? Yes, depending upon the number of students that we will service. Kasi baka isa lang o tatlo lang Kawawa naman po, mapapasa po sa inyo yung, uh, yung cost ng napakalaking, expen napakalaking cost ng gasoline. Mm. Right, yes. yes. Because gas prices are very high. Still. Yes. yes. So that's something to consider. So again, from Mrs. Driz, for those who will attend face-to-face -face classes, will the students need to undergo antigen tests prior to coming to school? And number two, what will the process be for contact tracing should there be any suspected cases? So first, antigen test. The antigen test, hindi na po eh. Unless you will pay for the antigen test. We will buy the at cost and mahal po <laughs> ang, ano, ang kit. So, hindi naman po as long as we take the temperature, nakita na naman namin hindi, uh, hindi batamlay yung mga students. Uh, no, we, unless all of you, uh, the parents will say we need antigen tests every day for the students that are coming here. Mm. Okay, and then what was the next question? Uh, what's the process of contact tracing kapag may suspected cases or confirmed cases? Okay, so when the kids enters the, the school, syempre, naka, may attendance po tayo dyan. And also the teachers, may attendance din. Lahat po nang papasok dito po sa school will have a logbook kung sino yung mga pumasok. The guests, actually, we will not allow the guests to enter. Yung po yung nakalagay sa DepEd then. In case na kailangan, kailangan lang ng, ng guests, then we can do it na lang via Zoom or virtual. So, hindi po papasok ang any guest in our school. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. And yeah. from uh, Mrs. De Castro. To clarify, we as parents can still choose if we want our child to have purely online class. So, yes. yes. Yes, that's correct. Paul. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next up is um, from Andy C. Is the booster shot available for children now? Okay, Mom in Layo, can you please uh, enlighten them? Yeah, enlighten. How young? Uh, How young, though, Paul? I think very young. Sir, uh, you can actually speak if you want, uh, Mr. C. How young? Po yung gusto magpa booster shot. And let's ask Mrs. Christie. Could you, Ma'am Inlayo? Oh, ayo, tamyo. Okay. Good morning po sa lahat. Ah. Uh, Ang allow po dito ngayon is 18 years old and above. First booster po. Available po ngayon dito, dito sa chapel. Andito po kami ngayon. At ang nakamilusin ng pasit. Ano, uh, 18 years old and above. If ever po na available kayo at wala ka kayong booster, pwede po kayo mag-inter. 
Okay, thank you, ma'am. Ah, uh, what age? I didn't really hear. 18. 18. 18 years old and above. Okay. 18 years old and above. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, po, ma'am. Salamat. Any more questions? Yes. Um, so will there be instances where the teachers will also use the high flex method during class? How will that affect the students who are in the face-to-face -face classes or in-person classes? Okay. So the high flex is that the students, you know, there's a limited face-to-face. -to -face to, so there will be students in front of the teacher and meron po tayong monitor na makikita natin yung mga students natin na virtually na nasa labas ng uh, school na nasa ba mga bahay ninyo. Okay? So, did I answer the question correctly? Or did I understand the question? Tama ba, Paula? Uh, I think so. I think you also mentioned it uh, earlier. Okay. Regarding this question. So, um, okay, next from Mitch Bautista. Sorry to have come in late. Are we doing F2F for the graduation? What is the plan? Okay, we will have a separate uh, meeting on that. So, para lahat ay, you know, ma malaman natin kung gusto niya ng face-to-face -face or yung ginagawa rin natin na um, uh, virtual. So, we will have, we will uh, announce the um, date, mm. no? Maybe sometime on May po. Uh, as you have consultation with the, ano, with the teachers later, um, magbibigay po ako ng dates, uh, at least two dates, and then you can choose which date, and um, and then yung po, uh, we will have a meeting yun do sa majority po na makaka-attend ng meeting na yon. Wait lang, may pahabol si um, NDC. What I meant is, will teachers work from home if they are unable to physically be at the school? So, um, the teacher is sick. Uh, can the students still stay in person sa, sa classroom? Uh, pero yung teacher work from home. Okay, we will have a special arrangement on that. Kasi meron naman po kaming uh, mga substitute na teachers. Hmm. You know, if the teacher is not available, then uh, may, sigurado po merong uh, teacher every day. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, from, yeah, from NDC again, will class size per teacher grow if high flex is implemented? I'm concerned that teaching quality might be affected with a larger class size. Okay, you mean the... The can... ratio of student to teacher. So right now, the biggest class we have is about 23, I believe. Hmm. So kung hahatiin po yun, hindi naman po siguro napaka-crowded. Unlike in the public schools na 160 or 100 or 60 students. Uh, I think it's still manageable. Uh, pagka po, ano, nag more than 30 na po or 20, more than 25, then we uh, hahatiin po natin yung class. Hmm. So, so that we, we, at least we have uh, 10, at least 10 or more students in the face-to-face. -face. Yung po yung ano, 10 per class. Yung nasa ano po ah, yung limited face-to-face, yung uh, on-site. Hmm. All right. Okay. Next, uh, from Mr. and Mrs. Kamen, ano po yung requirements pag galing sa ibang bansa ang student na nag, na magta-transfer? Uh, I think we have the birth certificate uh, usual. Ano yung sa, uh, Sang school galing, may meron pa de siyang credentials. Um, Filipino po ba? I don't think our school is parang ano. Uh, we cannot accept foreigners. So, Filipino. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, kailan po ang pasok ka next school year? Also from Mr. and Mrs. Family. 
Okay, it is estimated mga August 15, second week or third week of August. Okay. Second or third week of August. From Gina Venezuela, if the child has a comor comorbidity, required po ba siya pumasok sa face-to-face -face class? This? Or not? So it means that walang vaccine? No. Um, may example, may, may comorbidity siya like uh, heart disease or something uh, like that. Which, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think as long as hindi siya contagious, pwede naman po. Again, we cannot discriminate children that wanted to come to school. All right. Uh, there are some questions here also from NDC. Can we get copies of the presentation for the hybrid or high flex modality? Okay, I'll, just, uh, I'll give you. All right. Oh. Ayun. Somebody also asked this kanina yung about comorbidities. Uh, if a student is attending in person but is feeling sick one day, can they still attend via Zoom so they don't miss out on the day's lesson? Yes. Um, as I have said kanina, kaya po high flex is flexible po mm -hmm. whether papasok sila sa school o hindi. Okay lang po. As long as, you know, virtually pumasok sila. Okay. All right, now from Mr. J. Bicomo, uh, on the teacher's side, won't it be stressful for them also if there would be two shifts for face-to-face -face classes? Will it not affect the quality of teaching if the teachers are too tired to cover all classes? Oh, no po. <laughs> Hindi sila may stress. <laughs> um, I, you're thinking, I'm... You know, in ko sa kanina, kanina, let's say for instance, uh, grade one will be in the morning session. Tapos grade two, iba rin naman po yung teacher don will be in the afternoon session. And then, yun, or grade three morning, grade four afternoon. So, iba-iba pong teacher yon. So, they will not be stressed. All right. Okay. So I think that's all for the questions. We also yeah. have some really nice uh, words here. I know, thanking um, Dr. Lane for her clear explanations and um, for her outline in explaining the high flex modality. It really is a complex um, topic to talk about, but um, I think we are caught up with everything. If there are no further questions. Oh, wait. From Riza Balmedilia. Uh, do you have a question? She's raising her hand. Yes, Po. You can uh, turn on and pin, pin her in our Zoom. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Elena, I have a question. Whenever, if ever, if ever there would be a face to face and Mikaela is able to join, um, will there be a school service available? Yes, there is. Ayan, marami na kayo. <laughs> Nasasabi ko, yes, there is. Yes, yes, yes. Great, great. Kasi marami thank na kayo nagtanong. So, yeah, yeah, thank you for that, uh, Dr. Yeah, Elaine. Opo. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you for your question. Is there some more? I just wanted to, um, you know, give you information. Yun pong mga nag uh, uh, schools na nagkaroon ng high flex kasi uh, they are studying this and through their study ay they are disseminating this information to us na hindi binig um na hindi pa binigyan ng uh, opportunity ng DepEd na gawin yung face to face so may mga if you watch the news there are um schools nagin-rant ng DepEd na under research na magkakonduct ng uh, limited face-to-face. -face. Some of the public schools, ang ginawa po nila, let's say in grade 6 class, there are 50 students. Okay, 25 of them will attend the, ano po, the class. Ito po sa public, ah. 25 will attend the class for a week. While the other 25, I... Um, they have modules nasa bahay lang. Kasi di ba pag public, especially in Laguna, this is one of the schools in Laguna, um, 
nagmo-module yung half of the class. Tapos nasa school yung half of the class uh, face to face for one week. And then the next week swap naman sila. So yun po yung nangyayari sa uh, public school in Laguna. Some schools here in Quezon City with uh, private schools, ginawa na po nila yan. Um, they were able to uh, install the high flex um, classroom at merong um, pumapasok at meron naman nasa, um, nasa bahay. So, and they also switch, nag-switch nag, uh, din sila. Pero the high flex talaga is when the kids are not feeling well, hindi po pinapapasok. And it's, uh, it's the discretion ng studyante kung papasok siya o hindi. All right. All right. So from Meron Pa, some uh, yes. questions coming in. Just to clarify regarding the students going F to F, will they need to register every day so you or the school will know that they will be coming or we are going are we going to have a list of students who will come to school regularly so naka schedule by yon or you know parang parang by attendance in registration okay of course we ang gagawin po natin uh, we will ask we will have another meeting kasi napakahirap po nito. Actually, para akong naloka nung no? ako'y nag-aaral ito. <laughs> uh, modality na to, no? Kasi you have to really uh, serve yung mga, you know, what the parents want and what the students want. Minsan magkaiba yan, eh. <laughs> Minsan yung sudyate gusto pumasok. Yung parent naman huwag kang papasok, di ba? Because of the, you know, uh, the virus around. So, um, we will have at least, no, pwedeng yung half of the class can come, you know, to school. Pero kung yung studyante naman gusto araw-araw pumasok, then yeah, we will have a schedule. You know, as the student enters the school, magdi-disinfect po sila. Meron po tayong dry mist na tinatawag, magdi-disinfect. We will issue um, mask, you know, for them. Tingnan natin kung kaya yung budget natin. Yung dati nilang mask, they can put it in their bag, but we will issue them a new mask. mask. Kung kaya po, ah, titingnan natin yung budget, pero may, may mura naman tayong makukuhaan na mask, face mask. So, para fresh po, bago po yung mask nila pagdating dito sa school. Um, and, ayun, uh, we will try to really... And then, merong attendance. We have the biometrics uh, na, ano, attendance. And also, one of the requirements is every two hours po, si maintenance man, si Kuya Ray, ay maglalagay po lahat ng nahahawakan ng studyante. For instance, the railings. Pagkaakit po ng mga studyante, pupunasan po yan ng ating disinfectant solution. And then, of course, bago pumasok yung studyante na disinfect na po, nalagyan na po ng uh, uh, tinatawag namin cloud. Yung pong cloud ay pauusukan po yung, yung classroom. And then, the CR, yung uh, comfort room, ay uh, every hour nililinis po. Unlike before, parang, you know, uh, every four hours yata before nililinis. Uh, ngayon po, every hour, meron pong mak kayong makikita. If you visit the school, uh, we are getting ready. May makikita po kayong sheet of paper in each classroom kung kailan nilinisan ng ating maintenance team ang mga classroom at kung kailan nilinisan ang mga CR, kung kailan nilinisan yung mga railings natin po, yung mga hinahawakan. And even the doorknobs will be cleaned every um maybe every hour or every 30 minutes, nakalagay po yan sa isang sheet of paper in the classroom, in the CR. Checklist. And uh, yes, may, may checklist po na chinecheck kan kung nalinis po. So, ganun po katindi yung mga requirements ng DepEd. Yes, we take okay. um, your child safety and security seriously here in Calvary. Yes, correct, Paula. Um, now from... Uh, Mrs. Tess Leona, na I'm interested din po kami sa school service for Abby and Aaron. <laughs> so, madami na po kayo interested sa school service. So, that just goes to show. Um, 
your your interest and trust in our school service. So thank you, Bob. I think we are all out of questions now. So okay. I think we may close. Yeah, pero may kailangan pang i-admit to. Sino kaya yun? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, oh, no questions na po? Wala na pong questions? Wala na. May I see? I can't. Wala na po. Sa wala na pong uh, nag-raise ng hand. Okay. I think, uh, I believe some of you are already hungry for our lunch. Lana, so last call. One, two, three, and you can hold your peace. <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, let's, I think. Okay, so marami pong salamat sa inyong lahat. Uh, there are still a lot. No? Um, sana mag-enroll po kayo for the coming school year. Um, ito pong aking diniscuss will also be implemented in our in other schools. Uh, Doon lang magkakatalo on how we care for yours, for the students and for your kids. As I have told you, our motto is Calvary Christian School is your child's second home. Okay, God bless everyone and happy lunch po. Okay, bye-bye. Bye po.